What's up kiddos? This is Sean from Cloud901. If you don't know me, I am a filmmaker, an animator, and an artist. Here's some of my work. Today, I'm going to teach you how to make a cartoon character, all the way from sketching it in pencil, to inking it, to bringing it into the digital world and adding color in Photoshop. Alright, to start off, you want to draw some basic shapes. I usually start with the body and draw an oval, and for the head I'll draw a circle. And sometimes I put these guidelines on here to give my character more of a three-dimensional quality. Then I draw the legs, the feet sees, of course, and the arms. And now that I have the basic skeleton of my character, I'll draw more detailed characteristics like the nose, the mouth, the eyes, hair. I didn't like that nose. Now's a good time to change any big details that you want. And as you can see, I started with a really light sketch and I darkened my pencil a little bit, but I didn't go too heavy on the hand because after you get done inking is when you erase all pencil lines. All right, it's time to ink. Whenever I'm inking my drawing, I usually like to have different variations of thickness. Line variation is very important when you're making a cartoon. So when I started, I like to usually draw around the outside with a thicker ink line. This way it just stands out from the background. Later when you get into your drawing, you can choose a thinner line to do some of the inside parts of your character. This line variation, it, it just makes your character stand out more to what's closer and what's more detailed. Usually I like to establish my lines around parts like the eyes, as you can see, um, before I start to fill in with a thicker line like that. I like to add little details like scribbles into the hair. Now that you have your ink over your pencil complete and you have really clean lines, it's time to erase. And sometimes after I erase, I'll touch up some ink spots that might have erased away with the pencil. One of the things that you need to make sure that you do when scanning your sketchbook or your uh, drawing is to make sure that the DPI in your scanner is up to at least 300. Um, I also, when I'm scanning, I make sure that I scan in black and white mode. And you can do this with any type of scanner that you have at home. You can also use your iPhone. Um, just make sure you take it in black and white mode and adjust your brightness and contrast if needed. Your drawing should look something like this if you scanned it right in the black and white mode. Now I'm gonna crop off the little edges in my sketchbook that overlapped. All right, and the first thing that you should do that's very important is to change your image to grayscale. This way you can easily remove the white. And once you do that, you're gonna click on the channels tab because on the channels tab is where you can do this quick selection of everything that's white. And once you do that, you go back over to your layers tab and make a layer from your background and you're easily able to delete all of the white parts. Now, after you do that, you make sure that you um, go back to RGB mode before you continue editing.
Now typically I like to separate my drawing into three layers. The background layer, the color layer, and the outline layer. So in this portrait, I made my background blue. And there are two methods that I like to use whenever I'm coloring. I either like to use my paintbrush, which I paint behind the outline in my color layer, or I like to use the quick selection tool, the magic wand. I use that in my outline layer, but I color it in my color layer. And with these two methods, I, I usually color all of the main parts of my character. And then I'll, I'll go back over and do some details with some different kinds of brushes. And sometimes the scanner will pick up unwanted lines and um, just little pieces of grain, but um, have no fear because you can erase it in Photoshop. After you get to a point where you're satisfied with the way your base colors look, you can toggle the, the outline layer off and on and maybe make, up, make some cleanups to the way your color is. And when you're finally satisfied with all the solid colors, you can go back in and add shadows and lightness to your character to give your character more dimension. So I just chose different shades of the blue to add some shadow and then I selected inside each color and got like a, one of those special brushes. Um, there's different kinds of special effects brushes and things like that. I use that to add some lightness to my character. I did the same thing to the pants. Adding, adding some bright spots on the pants. And you can also smudge some of the colors to give it even more dimension. All right, so after you have your character complete, you're pretty happy with your character, you can add some elements to the background to make your portrait just a little more exciting. So I used some kind of special effects paint splatter and made it real big and then painted behind my character a little bit. All right, and I think I got to a point where I was pretty excited about it. And the last thing I forgot to do was add the green around my mouth. I know you guys are quarantined and probably really bored at home, so it's a perfect time to hone in on some of your skills and maybe enhance your portfolio. I know Cloud901 is closed down right now, so you don't have much to do. Um, so we're gonna teach you some things that you can do at home in your free time while you're bored, trapped in your house, about to lose your mind, to make cool things like t-shirts and uh, digital art, cinemagraphs, motion pictures, and things like that. So stay tuned and subscribe to our channel because we're gonna have a lot more of these coming for you. Teens like me, we get to hang out a lot more than we usually do at home. Cloud901 is unique, fun, and overall very nice and generous. Just all of them say the same thing. Wow, I wish I could have had a place like this when I was a kid.